am I? What am I? You're the girl who's getting out of this tower. All right, Bioshock Infinite. Uh, this is a game that has definitely held my attention since I first saw that very impressive demo two E3s ago. And despite the delays and the people who have left the team and all the swirling rumors around the game, it is something that I really, really wanted to turn out with the level of promise that I saw at that demo. Uh, well, it's finally here. And even with my very, very high expectations, there are things in the game that really surprised me, things I just haven't seen before. Some folks are born with silver spoon in hand. Lord, don't they have them This moment in its odd quietude and musical anachronism is one of numerous tableaus in Bioshock Infinite that catapult this exhilarating meditation on identity, guilt, belief, narrative, revolution, race, national identity, and eventually games themselves into a brilliant sensory symphony without precedent in the medium. It is one of the most remarkable creative feats I have experienced. Hallelujah. Taking place in an alternate 1912, you play Booker DeWitt, a Pinkerton wrapped by an unidentified guilt and debt that can only be relieved by retrieving a girl from Columbia, a city comprised of floating islands in the sky led by a zealot named Comstock who has fashioned America into a religion and his utopia into an architectural fetishization of a United States that never existed. Under Columbia's impossible sunshine and straw hats is a ferocious drive for racial purity mixed with a desperate need for immigrant labor to maintain its pathological idealism. And from that stems the discontent that desires violent change. There's already a fight to win. Only question is, which side are you on? Where this brilliant and metaphysical story takes the player is best discovered on your own. But the way it plays with the human need to concoct myth for power and comfort and the tenuous ability to hold on to it begins to highlight what is so extraordinary about Bioshock Infinite. It only can work as a game. The unique agency and complicity of the player in a game's narrative is part of its commentary. This isn't a game filled with player choice, but it is the best game about the choices we make as a person and a people, their consequences and their uncertainty of absolution, culminating in a devastating and beautiful conclusion that may infuriate some, but stands alongside Chinatown and Godot in its resonance. How do you suppose they manage that? I'll get back to you after I figure out the floating city bit. But the story itself isn't what distinguishes Bioshock Infinite. It's how all of this is conveyed to the player. With art direction that is almost numbing in its inventiveness, the world of Columbia tells so much and so effectively. Walk behind the scenes of a boardwalk arcade and see the toilet facilities of the minority employees, and then walk through the whites-only facilities up front. I hope you don't intend for me to follow you in there or a group of anti-Lincoln fanatics with a statue and paintings of John Wilkes Booth contrasted with the hidden printing presses of those who are breaking from Comstock's theology. Labor organizers are prominently displayed in stockades with signs stored to the side for the violations of other transgressors. Bioshock Infinite is filled with these details at every moment, manifesting a verisimilitude that is at once mysterious and exacting. To not stop and linger at these details along with the audio logs is to miss one of the greatest pleasures in video games. The Archangel showed a vision, a city lighter than air. The decision to present Booker as an actual character, voiced by the wonderful Troy Baker. Yeah, that's where they said I'd find her. And not as a faceless avatar for the player, is daring and very successful in finding an emotional context for the player. Excuse me, where am I? Heaven, friend. Or as close as we'll see till Judgment Day. But it's Elizabeth, the princess locked in the tower of this adult fairy tale, which is its greatest gamble and one of the most impressive accomplishments I've seen in a game. What could be better than this? 
Once you help her escape her bizarre and ominous imprisonment, she rarely leaves Booker's side. And it is the relationship that slowly evolves and metamorphosizes between you that is the central thrust of the story. Fantastic. If the character doesn't work, the game's gonna go with it. The smart writing of an intelligent, interesting character and an incomparable performance by Courtney Draper, the success is halfway there. It's the sublime design and animations, drawing inspiration from the fluid movement of classic Disney, that turn Elizabeth into the most striking character I've seen in a game and pulls off the most impressive of all technological feats. She earns your affection and recalibrates the endless threats in the game into something far more dire than just respawning. Uh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> But Bioshock Infinite is also a video game, and despite the heavy themes, it is one of the most rollicking adventures you can play. Put him down. Similar to the original Bioshock, you have guns and powers, here called Vigors, and they can be used in rapid concert with one another. There are abundant upgrades that are available, in addition to numerous articles of clothing that offer buffs. This all comes to fruition in combat that is actually memorable and urgent throughout the game. Here you go! Great! While the backdrops themselves are as stunning as everything else in the game, verticality, landscape variety, and Elizabeth's hair powers provide deeply gratifying inventiveness to the proceedings that control smoothly and precisely. The introduction of special enemies like the motorized patriot and the handyman who tend to appear mid-battle change up the player's priorities and keep the frequently long battles from losing their sense of vitality. And it's all driven by a propulsive score and sound design that raise these moments to ecstatic heights. <laughs> But the last magnificent rabbit that Bioshock Infinite pulls out of its masterful hat is the aerial combat from the skyline. Easy to jump on and off with the option to obliterate an enemy in the process, this technically wondrous achievement indulges in childlike fantasies I never thought could be realized. The sense of speed and power and gleeful thrill when shooting at enemies hurtling towards you or desperately shooting from floating platforms never tires. In almost every combat instance involving the Skylines, I reloaded just to play it through with even more aesthetic satisfaction. While the combat works deliciously well, it's also the pacing throughout. Stopping down for prolonged sequences exploring the boardwalk or the shanty town that make those bursts of violence resonate so well. While Bioshock Infinite has moments dedicated to just combat or story, they don't feel discreet. It all melds into an organic whole that was impossible to let go of and was hard to say goodbye to at the game's conclusion. I have played many games in my life, some of which have hinted at where the medium could go, but I never expected any one game to so reinvigorate, redefine, and open up the possibilities of video games without having to eschew its fundamental pleasures. Bioshock Infinite, in all its strange, beautiful flamboyance and subtlety, will be discussed, argued, and lionized for a long, long time. But for now, just play it and get lost in its brilliance. A five out of five. There you have it. Yes, I absolutely love this game. It, I put it in the rarefied company of something like Half-Life or Uncharted 2. Um, two things I would point out. If you have the opportunity to play it on PC, I highly encourage you to do so. That's how I played it. Uh, you crank that all up. It is a visual feast that really doesn't have any equal. Also, don't try to race through this game. That isn't what it's about. Get lost, read the posters, check everything out. It just, it's just kind of an incredible world to fall into. All right, there you have it. Uh, play the game, comment below. We do have some fascinating interviews with Ken Levine. It helps us uh, flesh out some of the more uh, obtuse parts that you're gonna find in Bioshock Infinite. But most importantly, go have fun.